Who wants to see an LS7 intake shootout? We've got the MSD, the High Ram, the Carbon PTR, all on a 427-inch Stroker cammed high compression LS7. Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and as you can see, I was attacked by a rabid gold retriever puppy. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at intake manifolds. You can see back here lots and lots of intake manifolds and today it's something different because we're taking a look at LS7 intake manifolds. That's right, the Cathedral Port guys, the LS3 guys get all the love, but now it's time to show some love to the LS7 guys. We have an MSD Atomic intake manifold, we have a Holly High Ram intake manifold, and we have a Performance Design Carbon PTR intake manifold. Who makes the most power? There's only one way to find out. Let's check out the dyno. Awkward thing here. Yeah. <laughs> here goes James again. <laughs> Intake number 27. I always forget this cable in the way here. Trying to hold the camera, get the lines out of the way. Okay, guys, let's take a look first at our test motor, but we're going to compare an MSD in atomic intake manifold, LS7 version, to the Holly High Ram, and then to a performance design PTR intake manifold, kind of similar in design to the High Ram, so it would definitely be a consideration if you're looking at either one of those intake manifolds. We're going to find out how they all compare on the LS7 stuff, because let's face it, the Cathedral Port guys and the Rec Port LS3 guys kind of get all the love and not as many people, and for good reason, maybe they're a good bit more expensive, are using the LS7 stuff, but we know that the LS7, in terms of factory cylinder heads anyway, they're they're kind of the go-to deal. They certainly make more power than any of the factory other, other cylinder heads, so they definitely a powerful combination, especially in ported form like our version, but let's take a look first at our test motor, and we'll find out, because the test motor is going to help dictate the kind of power gains that we get from any sort of modification that we're making. So this was a 420 LS7. It had a 4130 set of Molly Forge flat top pistons with valve relief so that they could run these camshafts that they're running. And that combined with a 63cc chamber cylinder head, because these were milled 40 or 45 thousandths, brought the static compression up to this thing was like 12.6 or 12.7. All this testing was run on E85, so the static compression was not really a big deal. And this was a pretty good sized cam, so all you guys that want to calculate <laughs> dynamic compression, you guys can do that. Speaking of camshafts, this had a stage 4 Brian Tooley Racing LS7 camshaft, which was a 662 lift a 246-260X duration, something something in the 260s, and 111 degree lobe separation angle. So a good size camshaft, and, and as we'll see, it makes pretty good power. This thing also had um, the 1.8 rockers that we mentioned. It had a valve spring upgrade. It had inch and 7 eighths long tube headers. Uh, had a ATI damper on it. And then for cylinder heads, we had a set of LS7 heads, but they'd been tuned up. Not only did they have the valve spring upgrade and they were milled, but they'd been tuned up by the guys at BES Racing. So Bischoff knows a thing or two about how to make power. So these were uh, given the once over by the guys at BES Racing. So we got lots, even more flow than the factory LS7s could supply. So enough to support this kind of power level fairly easily. So to start things off, we ran, and then uh, James Short, uh, responsible for doing all the tuning on their Haltech setup. So uh, the guy, to get things started, we started off with the very popular MSD intake manifold, the Atomic for the LS7. Popular deal, especially for guys wanting to run something that you know fits under the hood and, and will work and make good power. It was run with 102 millimeter throttle body. And run in this manner on this 420 and this modified 427 combination with the MSD intake manifold. This thing made over 700 horsepower. So it made 713, 13, yeah, 713 horsepower. 
Peak torque checked in at 604 foot-pounds of torque. So it did very well. You could see a nice curve, and, and this is something we've come to expect, good average torque production and stuff. And this thing ended up making peak power... Uh, 67, 6800. So it was revving out fairly decently. You can see it's falling off. We ran it all the way out to 7700 or so. Here's what happened when we replaced the MSD with a Holly High Ram. You can see the High Ram in typical fashion, long runner, short runner kind of thing. We see this stuff all the time, and this is normally what happens. It did indeed make more peak power. We're up to 733 horsepower, so it did very well and made more peak power from about 63 or 6400 on up. So if you're looking at that part of the curve, definitely the shorter runner manifolds like the high ram are, are definitely an option. Below that, the longer runner MSD intake manifold definitely made more power. In fact, from 3000 all the way to 63 or 400, the MSD, the long runners kind of showed <laughs> their effective tuning residence. So this is where they were designed. This is the effective operating range for that longer run manifold. But you can see, so now you get to choose where do I want to make power? Am I most concerned about the top end of my drag racing this thing, which would, might be the case for a combination like this? Or am I more concerned for the stuff below 6,500 RPM? Then maybe a long runner is the way to go. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we replace these manifolds with the performance design PTR intake. Okay, guys, we've taken a look at a comparison between the MSD Atomic LS7 intake manifold versus the Holly High Ram, obviously for the LS7 as well. Now let's find out what happens when we replace the High Ram with a carbon PTR intake manifold from the guys at Performance Designs. And I think, and correct me if I'm not wrong, you guys can let me know in the comments, especially the guys from, from Performance Designs. I think that this intake manifold is similar to the FAST LSX HR, obviously the PTR being full carbon fiber and the LSX HR being a composite manifold, but I think the design is fairly similar. So somebody let me know if they think that these two would perform the same, but this was the carbon PTR intake manifold from the guys at Performance Designs. So let's see how it compares to the MSD atomic intake manifold. Uh, you can see it actually did very well. It, it made more peak power than the, than the MSD. 735, 36 horsepower, so it did very well in terms of peak power. But the thing that uh, I like about this, and I'll show you a comparison in just a minute of the PTR design versus the higher amp, because both of those are kind of, you know, higher RPM design manifolds. But the thing that I like about this PTR design compared to the MSD is it did make more peak power, so it was better from 62 or 60, 6200 on out. But it didn't really trade much in the way of torque the way that the high ram did down low. There was this little bump here at uh, how many foot pounds is that? 69 versus 78. So nine foot pounds here at 47, 4600, 4700 RPM. But otherwise, they were very, very similar, which is the sign of a good design because it's pretty easy to make more peak power than longer runner manifolds like the Atomic. But it's harder to do that and then not trade out a whole bunch of low speed power. So uh, obviously this PTR intake manifold, in addition to having you know, carbon fibery goodness, it does look awesome. In fact, when I got one and I tested it on my big LS3 intake manifold setup, I was a little concerned with not dropping it and scratching it because it's, it, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's like a show quality thing. But the question is, and you guys let me know in the comments, is that reason enough to spend? I'm sure it's fairly, I'm sure it's fairly pricey compared to the other intake manifolds, but is that enough of a reason? If you want your thing to stand out, I mean, this thing is impressive. And obviously, judging by the results, if you've got an LS7, this is a pretty good intake manifold. I mean, it's making pretty good power here. But now let's see how the performance design intake manifold compares to the high ramp. Okay, guys, we've taken a look at two short, or you could even call them medium length runner manifolds compared to a long runner manifold with kind of predictable results. The shorter runner stuff obviously makes more peak power. And then as we saw, uh, certainly with the high ram uh, trade off and low speed power, less of a trade off with the carbon PTR. But now let's see how those two manifolds compare. So we have our Holly high ram here, 732. 33 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 589 foot pounds. Yeah, 589 foot pounds. And then here's how here's how it compares to the carbon for, for 
performance design PTR intake manifold. The performance design intake manifold, as you can see, is better up to about 7,200 RPM. And then the high ram, maybe just a touch better out past the 74, 7,500 RPM range. So if you're really revving it out higher, the Holly might kind of uh, come into play here. And it needs to be noted that the carbon PTR intake manifold is available with different length runners. And so we ran this all with the as delivered runners, which were the longest of the three. The nice thing about the design, and in, in addition to being it, uh, you know, looks cool because it's carbon fiber, but you can adjust it. So if you wanted to make your carbon PTR, which delivers this kind of power curve, you know, better than the high ram up to 7,200 or so, but you took it, you're taking it to the track and you wanted it to run it out to, you know, you've got a combination that goes out to 8,000 RPM. Well, all you have to do is shorten the runner length, and now it can be a higher RPM intake manifold, where with things like the high ram or other fixed length runner intake manifolds, you don't have that option. So that's kind of a nice deal. The fast uh, adjustable manifold, similar kind of thing where you have different runner inserts that you can put in and make it a long or a medium or a short. The PTR also does that. And so you, you have a little bit of adjustability. So like I said, if you're, maybe this is your, <laughs> your daily driver, drive around. If you drive around with a 12 and a half to one L LS7 with this kind of camshaft and stuff in it. But the nice thing is, as I said, you can adjust it and make more power out on the big end. Armature holder, there you have it. LS guys, we got some intake manifolds for you guys. Armature holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.